Grand Blue Fantasy Relinks version 1.1.0 just came out and it has sparked an intense discussion about the state of the game. With the release of the new update, we got a lot of things from content to adjustments. And these got people going crazy. I know it's easy to complain and point out what we don't like about the new stuff, so I'll make sure to put in positive points because I don't want to look like I'm hating on a game I absolutely love right now. And Psygames do deserve praise for the great things they're doing for the game. Before I go into the specifics of the updates and the conversation going on, if you enjoyed this type of content, please leave a like. If not, I won't stop you from disliking. A lot of you are also new to the channel and a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. Maybe we can reach 300 subs before March ends. Okay, to start off, version 1.1.0 introduced both adjustments to the game and the characters. They fixed the camera, or they've been fixing it at least. If you're a reeling player, you already know the jankiness of the camera, so this is a huge change. I didn't really notice it that much, but according to patch notes, they fixed a bunch of things related to it. Oh, and they adjusted the parrot and its voice signs when you trans Marvel. So, <laughs> that's also cool. Now with regards to the character adjustments, it was mainly bug fixes but it did coincidentally nerf a lot of characters. This definitely upset a lot of people because instead of balancing out the characters, it just felt like nerfs all across the board. I've seen people complain about how Games just went ahead and weakened the strong characters, especially the ones that relied on animation cancelling, which is now gone, for skills at least, and kept the weak characters weak. I understand the frustration because I see the likes of Percival who was broken with animation cancels get nerfed, and also see Gandagoza, who is considerably one of the weakest in the cast, stay weak because he didn't really get anything. This change also had players felt pushed away from playing Catalina, who had a difficult time managing Ares without animation cancelling her skill, because they felt animation cancelling was the main reason that she was playable in the first place. Now I did kind of expect animation cancel to be removed because they've done this before with Soul in Guilty Gear Strive, who also had animation cancel removed from beta to the release of the game. But I think the frustration is understandable when an update basically just makes a general roster weaker and no one really got stronger to balance out the cast. This also nerfed Fairy, which angered players because they felt like the nerf to her SBA gauge fail rate with regards to her aerial combo made her fun to play. A lot let out the frustrations with how much worse and unfun she is to play now. There are more complaints with other characters' nerfs, but I'm not gonna cover all of them because you get the point. Next up is Lucilius. Now, I do wanna say I really feel like he is a very good fight. Uh, okay, wait, I can hear your fingers click clacking on the board. Before I start complaining about how tedious he is, let me clarify. I'm not talking about the grind, I'm talking about his fight itself. Lucilius is a difficult fight with him constantly moving around the map with his balls that seal your skills and his labor mechanic. But all of this makes it such an interactive fight. He keeps you on your toes constantly, making sure that all your movements and attacks are well thought out. He don't just spam your strongest combo and skills, because he can seal your skills if you get hit by one of his balls. You can't just turn off your brain and continue attacking because he moves around a lot. And his labor gimmick is so refreshing because it's a good mix of movement mechanics, combat and decision making and team coordination. Now all of this to say that Lucilius is a much more interactive and fun fight compared to Proto Bahamut. Well, to me personally. The problem lies in the grind and the fact that the materials you need from him are so rare that the tediousness and the annoying length of the fight with the unskippable cutscenes and all the downtime from Bloodthirst is just so much more pronounced because of how much you have to repeat the fight. The fun is taken out of it when it becomes a chore because of the sheer amount of times you have to redo the quest just to get one specific material you need a huge amount of to buy and level up the new sigils. This also brings out the toxicity of the player base because now people hate playing online lobbies because everyone else just becomes collateral and just wastes your time trying to farm a tier because your team can't do the fight fast enough or because they cause the quest to fail. I'm not saying it's toxic for players to not want to play with other people. I mean that it brings out the negativity of online play when it leads to players feeling frustrated because they can't effectively farm an item that you need a huge amount of. It's actually just more efficient to play with AI or a pre-made group because you can guarantee a win every time. And efficiency is all that matters now that you have to farm a quest 1000 times for materials for the new sigils. 
Speaking of the new sigils, I am at least happy with the fact that they introduced new sigils because this opens up more variety in the future if and when we get more traits for more diverse build paths. The new sigils themselves have caused an uproar in the community. The new sigils Alpha, Beta, and Gamma are ways to increase your damage cap, with the damage cap trait being the secondary trait of the sigil. Okay, first let's talk about the obvious. It is hella grindy to get these sigils. One thing that surprised everyone is the fact that you cannot use Azerite Splendors to fully cap out the new sigils, meaning you have to farm every single material needed to level up the sigil all the way to 15, although you can just level them up to 14 because of the Terminus Weapon Sigil Booster trait. But that's besides the point. Ignoring the other materials you need such as Rainbow Prisms and Silver Centrums, you need two specific materials from Lucilus's Drop Loot, which are Dark Residue and Tears of the Apocalypse. Now, Dark Residue is pretty easy to farm. You get multiple of those from the quest. But the tiers are a whole different story. I don't know what the percentage of the drop rate is, but it's more or less one tier every five quests. Possibly worse? Initially, someone might think, okay, it's not that terrible. Because it's supposed to be a rare material, which shouldn't be easy to farm. But the problem lies in how many you need. You need five tiers to purchase one of each new sigils, and 6 more tiers for each sigil to level them up all the way to 15. Or less if you just want to level them up to 14 because of, you know, sigil booster. But I did the math. And that's a lot of tiers. Meaning an insane amount of repeating Lucilius' quest just for each sigil. Now it doesn't matter how interesting the fight is. If it's a lot more stressful and annoying of a fight compared to what people would claim to be a boring quest like Proto Bahamut, your fun and interactive fight just became the most annoying chart to do in the game. This is not the only thing people are complaining about. It's also the fact that with these new sigils, you'd have to sacrifice your damage cap 5 plus with utility traits if you'd want to run these new sigils because of the way they're designed. To be honest, at first, I was also frustrated with the sentiment that people have shared about how it ruins the builds we've had before the patch because with how essential damage cap is to the builds, whoever the character is, the new sigils removes the variety of the builds. The additional traits a damage cap 5 plus sigils gave, gave more room and freedom for players to build with utility and defensive traits that you can no longer do if you put in the new sigils in your build. But I could also understand the other side of the argument, with people stating that these do give you a choice. The new sigils gives players the option to go full damage, sacrificing utility or defense to hit harder, or build more defensively. At the end of the day, there's still the conversation of do you want to build hyper-aggressively with the risk of getting down multiple times throughout the fight? Or do you want the safety net of the utility and defensive traits? Whichever side of the argument you're on, do let me know what you feel about the new sigils or any of the changes the update included. All I ask for you is to be civil about it in the comments without spewing hate towards people who might disagree with you. That's all for this video. Let me know if you like this type of video by commenting down below or liking the video or disliking it. And please do consider subscribing. We're oh so close to 300 subs. I also stream this game and attempt to do solo runs on this YouTube channel and on twitch.tv slash phpaust. That's it for this one. Happy grinding and gaming. Peace out. Bye-bye.